Hello and welcome to the third video in this intermediate Java tutorial series. In this series we're going to be looking at inheritance with objects. So in the last tutorial I mentioned briefly how the class object, the built-in Java class object, was a parent of every single object that you make in Java. I didn't really explain what that meant. We also looked at the toString method, that was method belonging to the object class. Again, I didn't really explain how we have access to that method from that class. So the reason we have access to those methods is due to inheritance. Classes can have as many children as they want, but each class can only have one parent, although the relationship can extend upwards infinitely. So you can see I've made here cat, dog, goldfish. We're going to do like animals example here. So this is in terms of like a pet shop. So I've done for the cat, I've got this, the name of the cat, the price of the cat and the age, but I've got the same variable for dog and the same variable for goldfish. It's a bit of a waste redeclaring each of these in each of the individual classes, especially since they share these variables commonly. It doesn't really need to be redeclared every single time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a parent class called pet, and that's gonna hold these three variables here. And it means we won't need to redeclare them in each of these. We can just make pet the parent of these classes and then we it extends all the functionality of that pet class we'll get all of these variables back so we're going to go ahead and make a new java class called pet we can delete the comments and now we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste those variables into here and we're going to make a few helper methods so can show you examples later we're going to make a public method because we want it to be available to every class, every other class we use this method in. So we're going to make set name, and it's going to require a string of a new, a new name to set it to. String with a capital S, of course. And of course, we need a return type. We're not going to return anything because we're just setting the variable. So we're going to go this dot name to access the global instance of name up here, and we're just going to set it equal to the name that's provided as a parameter. So we're going to make these same variables again, public void set price. The reason price is a string is because it will have the currency symbol in front of it and then full stop in the middle, etc. Possibly commas if it's expensive enough. So we'll put price here. Then we can say this dot price equals price. And then finally we'll make setting the age. Set age, int age. This dot age equals age. So we've got quite a functional pet class here. We've got name, we've got a price, and an age variables for this pet. We've also got helper methods to set the values for each of these. You can just access the variable directly and put equals and then set it to, but it's neater and it will make sense uh, later on in the tutorials why we make methods rather than just directly accessing them and setting variables. So now that we've got this functional pet class here, we need to give this functionality to each of these classes here. So we're going to go ahead and remove these variables since we're going to be inheriting them from the pet class. Uh, now the syntax for making this pet class the parent is we simply go beyond the after the name declaration. We just do a space and then we write the word extends and then the name of the class we want the functionality of. So in this case pet. So the class cat extends pet means that all of this functionality within the pet class is extended over to this cat class here. So you can see now if I go into the class and press space you can see we've got all these methods from, you can see it says override methods from the pet class, we've got the set age, set name, set price etc. We'll copy this over to the other classes of course. We want the dog to extend the functionality of pet as well and also the same for goldfish. Now as well as methods and variables child classes also inherit the constructors of their parents. So we're going to make a constructor here, public pet, and we're going to require the name, the price, and the age. Then we can just set them quickly. This.name equals name, this.price equals price, 
and this dot age equals age. So you can see now we've thrown errors in each of these classes here. That's because we've got the class extending the functionality of pet, but because this pet class requires these variables to be passed in to the constructor, we need to make the constructor for these classes as well to pass in the variables that pet requires and also to pass in variables that the individual classes might require as well. The whole point of inheritance is to extend the functionality and then add on functionality specific to the class you're working with. And we can go ahead and add some class specific variables. For cat we could have, I guess, if it's a kitten or not. We don't need to give it a default value. For dog, equally, we could have if it's a puppy or not. I know that those are pretty much the same thing, just like whether the animal is young or not. But just for the sake of example, we're giving these specific, class specific variables. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do it in this cat class first. So let's make a constructor for cat here because that's how we're gonna get this that's how we're going to feed in the values to this parent pet class because the pet class that we're extending it needs these values to be passed in so we're going to do that via the cats constructor so let's open and close the curly braces now as parameters we're going to need not only kitten which is custom one but we're also going to need all of these parameters here so i'm going to go ahead and copy these and uh, paste them in so that when you make a new cat object, you're going to have these class specific variables here, you're initializing those. You also need to initialize the variables of the parent class here. Now I'll show you the syntax for passing in values to the parent constructor. You simply write the keyword super and the word super, when you call super as a method like so with the uh, with the parentheses, it has to be the first line in the constructor of the class. If you put stuff before it, like anything, literally system out print line, it won't work. Super needs to be on the first line of the this constructor here. So what do we pass into super? Calling this keyword super as a method is effectively calling the constructor as a method. So you basically just pass in the parameters that this constructor here requires, so name, price, and age. So we've already passed in these parameters here into the cats constructor, so we can just write name, price, age. Now, there's no errors because everyone's happy. The parent pet class has received the variables that it requires into the constructor. We haven't set this kitten variable, that's the only thing we haven't done. So this dot kitten equals kitten. So now we have this cat class with the extended functionality of this pet class. In the constructor, again, we're giving in the values that the parent requires because we need, if the parent has a constructor, we need to give it those values before the object can be properly initialized. And uh, just beforehand, we've passed in some class specific variables. The dog and goldfish examples are exactly the same as the cat one, so I won't retype all the same code we've done. You would simply make a constructor for dog, so you'd put public dog and then pass in the variables and then write the super keyword. So I'm going to show you why uh, this inheritance is useful. So apart from the fact that all the functionality is extended, when you're declaring variables, you don't need to actually be specific about which class you want the variable uh, to hold if it's if it's extended if they're all extended from the same one so what we can do here is you can see we can write pet and then just a pet as the variable name we can set this equal to a new cat we can set it equal to a new dog or a new goldfish and the errors are there because we didn't provide the constructor so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Another useful thing you can do is if you had a pet array, for example, you could set it equal to because you don't need to specify which one, which specific one you want. If it's if it extends that class, you could just put you could have an array of pets. You could have a new cat, a new dog and a, a new goldfish in that array of pets. And the reason you can do that is because they all extend the pet class. Normally you wouldn't be able to do this if you specified a specific type 
uh, class type, if you did like cat, a uh, cat array, for example, you wouldn't be allowed to make a new dog class. You wouldn't be allowed to make a new goldfish class, only the cat classes. But because we put this parent type pet, all of these ones, ch uh, children of the pet class, so they can all go inside this array. Again, the errors here is because we don't have this. We haven't provided these variables here. We can just put in empty strings like so, just to get rid of the errors. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at even more functionality for classes and parent classes.